Good morning, everybody. Brian Newbert here from goldenblack.com, live once again at home here. I know what you're thinking. Uh, if you can even tell, the, the wall behind me is uh, transitioning into a different shade of putrid. Um, that's because the project finally started a year and a half late uh, this past weekend. I've begun painting this room uh, to try to eradicate the peep colored yellow. Uh, the walls were when we bought the house. Um, so the first uh, layer of primer uh, went down yesterday and uh, what that means is now that you're watching these goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcasts you are now both literally and figuratively watching the paint dry um, anyway once again this is your first goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast for the week uh, it is Monday uh, I believe um, if you're new to the show this is a little daily conversation piece we're doing on our social media platforms, on YouTube, on our podcast platform, thus the simulcast at Golden Black Radio. Um, so those of you listening have no idea what I'm talking about when I reference things in the background. Um, also, obviously, we'll post on goldenblack.com, which is our, our primary hub, obviously. Um, this is brought to you by Follett's Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, the Charters Team Remaxability Plus, want to remind you, as always, again, that the Sixth Street Dive restaurant in Lafayette, as well as our friends at Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette, all remain open for carryout orders. Please, if you want to support local business or you just want some damn good food, please keep them in mind. Sixth Street Dive, Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn, also the official ladder of the goldenblack.com daily quarantine behind me. Um, if the NCAA tournament can have one, why can't I? Uh, topics. We will finally actually start talking about something substantive here. Have a lot of good ideas uh, for many of you who've emailed in or direct messaged me or whatever with some suggestions for topics moving forward. But there's been some Purdue football recruiting news here in the last couple days. So I figured what I would do today is just kind of run down uh, some Purdue football recruiting related matters, uh, more of an update, more of a big picture kind of look at things uh, right now as opposed to anything else. Some of those other ideas I have for down the road from some of you, I will obviously um, have on a list and I, I will get to in due time in most cases. Friday night, and I don't know what the deal is with all this Friday afternoon and Friday evening recruiting news this year. I think dudes are just really kind of bored. Um, I don't know if this had anything to do with that or whatever, but there's been a lot of Friday recruiting news uh, lately. Um, the old Friday news dump in a good way. Uh, but Friday, Purdue added uh, transfer safety Tyler Coyle from Connecticut. He's a one-year graduate transfer, a player who played at UConn as a redshirt player years ago when Bob Diaco was the head coach and Anthony Poindexter was the defensive coordinator. Obviously now Diaco is Purdue's defensive coordinator, Poindexter is the co-defensive coordinator and the safeties coach. Uh, so there's some familiarity there. Coyle was UConn's leading tackler uh, the last two years. UConn wasn't very good on defense, but he was a productive player, a good player, according to our pro football focus analytics. Um, he did have a good season based on their, um, their, their, their assessments this past season. Obviously, you always look skeptically at tackles on a defense that's not very good. Because somebody has to make a tackle. Uh, it, it, it can be a really deceiving uh, statistic sometimes. But Coyle, according to some of our advanced analytics we have, also was one of two players on that defense who graded positively in uh, pro football focuses eyes. So obviously a position where Purdue would like to get better. It's an important position in any defense. But it is a position at Purdue where Purdue can get better. It can be more physical. It can be more athletic. It can just be better. Purdue does have some guys returning who have played a lot of football in their careers. But I think with Jalen Graham transitioning more to kind of like a linebacker sort of situation, Marvin Grant coming off uh, shoulder surgery that cost him his season last year, the future of the position as it looked a year ago um, might look a little bit different today uh, than it did then. I think anytime you can get an experienced player at an important position like this, it is certainly worthwhile. I'm not going to sit here and say that it, that that Tyler Coyle has played his whole career at UConn for the coaches who know him, uh, who are at Purdue now. This isn't 
Purdue bringing T.J. McCollum from Western Kentucky after he'd played three years in their system. This is simply a little bit of background. It's not like he walks right in the door and knows everything about Diaco, knows everything about Poindexter, but it certainly helps. They know of him. They know him as a person. It seems like a win-win here. Um, Purdue will continue to recruit the graduate transfer wire. I would. They will obviously continue recruiting offensive linemen. Potentially someone's lined up. There's information on that on our site um, from Thursday. But they will continue to recruit offensive linemen. They will, if a linebacker pops up who's too good to pass up, great. Uh, but Tyler Coyle seems like a pretty good addition uh, for Purdue. Around the 2021 situation, um, a couple of things. Uh, Purdue has five commitments, I think, six commitments, whatever it is. I should have looked that up uh, because I can't keep it straight. A couple of things imminent. Uh, Corday Sidnor, uh, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, my apologies to him. If I'm not, I haven't heard him say his name yet. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Corday Sidnor is a defensive end uh, from New York City, where Purdue obviously had a little bit of recruiting success uh, this past year. Um, and before that, when they got Ahmad Anderson a few years ago out of Staten Island, uh, he's... I think warmed up to decide here pretty soon. Things look encouraging for Purdue. Zach Richards, the offensive lineman from, from Mooresville, Indiana, the teammate of J- Jalen Allstott Vandevanter, Purdue's other offensive line commitment at the moment, um, said yesterday that he's going to announce on Friday. Uh, he's down to four, Purdue, Illinois, Indiana, and Cincinnati. There's a story on him on our website right now at goldenblack.com. He told me last month that Purdue is his favorite. Uh, unless something's changed here or unless Purdue has decided uh, its priorities lie elsewhere, I would imagine that is another promising situation for Purdue. An interesting angle there, too, is not only is Richards um, one of Purdue's longest-running offensive line targets, uh, but he is also has become relatively close with uh, Josh Sales from Brownsburg, who's an offensive tackle who has a Purdue offer, Seemingly another pretty high Purdue priority. Um, He could help with Josh Sales as well. So Purdue could have a little bit of a domino effect here on the offensive line. um, Kicking off if they're able to get Zach Richards on Friday. Uh, Deion Burks is a wide receiver from Belleville, Michigan, who uh, Purdue has a receiver committed already. But I'd imagine this will be at least a two wide receiver class. I'm of the impression he is a wide receiver and not a quote-unquote athlete for them, but um, he seems to have Purdue up at the top of his list. He is supposed to announce on May 13th another three-star guy who's relatively highly recruited. Um, May 13th, I believe, is his his commitment date, so that's kind of right around the corner here. Um, Time is flying, of course, uh, as we're all stuck in our our houses. Javon Grigsby is a safety from New Orleans who Purdue's put a lot of time into, made a real priority, who, uh, I don't know, he said yesterday he's not in any hurry to commit, but, uh, you know, things can change sometimes. Obviously, Yanni Karloftis is somebody who I'm sure a lot of you, if you're following this, have paid a lot of attention to, the four-star linebacker from West Lafayette High School, the younger brother of George Karloftis, who perhaps you've heard of him. Uh, Purdue's got a lot going for it there, obviously, uh, a lot of natural connections, a lot of reasons for that kid to come to Purdue, not the least of which is Purdue needs linebackers uh, bad right now. They need impact linebackers. He could be like the, the right recruit at the right time for Purdue. Obviously, the family is very close with Purdue. Purdue is very close with the family. Um, a lot of reasons George Karloff this came to Purdue uh, all apply uh, to Yanni as well. I've always said that it was going to always going to be really hard for him to be the one who says to the family, Hey, I know it, it's awesome that everybody's here. Everybody can go to George's games. Everybody can be around, but I'm going to be the one to get out of town. That's uh, as long as George Karloftis experience at Purdue was a positive one. I always thought Purdue was going to be in a pretty good spot with Yanni Karloftis. And I know Purdue didn't have the season it wanted to have last season from a wins and losses perspective, but I don't think George Karloftis freshman season individually could have gone any better. Um, so I would have to think Purdue's going to be in a really good spot with Yanni Karloff. This Wisconsin is the team I think is going to give him a lot to think about, but I do think at the end of the day, Purdue's going to have a really, really good shot there. I don't know if anything's imminent. Um, of course, we don't know how this, uh, 
this extended dead period affects these guys. Anything is possible at any time in terms of, in terms of commitment timeframes, uh, because guys are literally just sitting around right now, uh, in a lot of cases, but some other guys to keep an eye out for Donovan McCulley, the quarterback from Lawrence North in Indianapolis. I'm quite certain he is kind of Purdue's guy. I'm sure they're recruiting a bunch of quarterbacks, but I, I think in the perfect world, Donovan McCulley is the guy they get. Uh, he's obviously an hour and a half down the road. He's a Rivals 250 member, a four-star player. Um, the sort of dual threat element quarterback that Purdue's been looking for the last couple classes. They want to be more versatile, I think, at quarterback. They want to have that guy who's a running threat, too, who you can run, you can use on some design runs, who can make some plays outside the system, whatever it may be. I think that's a really important part of football nowadays, to, to, be, to be multiple that way, to limit turnovers by the ball, not leaving the quarterback's hands. Sometimes I think he's uh, kind of that guy, and that's a big part of the reason he's sort of the guy they want. Um, Daylon Carnell as well at Ben Davis – has Purdue in his, in his top three. It's, it's, uh, uh, he's a cornerback. Um, I don't think anything's imminent there, but he will take visits. I can only assume whenever visits can be taken. Um, and it would be, um, I think Purdue stands to have a pretty good shot there. Uh, Purdue's in a pretty good spot with a really, really good class in Indiana. I didn't even mention, um, a couple other guys in the state, uh, Kyron Montgomery at Pike being another one who I, I, I think Purdue's going to be one of the favorites for uh, long term. Whether they'll get him or not, I don't know, but I think they're in a pretty, a pretty solid spot with him too. Another four star uh, recruit from Indiana. This is a really deep class uh, in Indiana. A, a really, that's a siren. A couple of God, the distractions. A couple of really, really high-end players who Purdue's put itself in a really good spot with. This is a, a really deep, atypically deep and talented class in the state of Indiana. I think Purdue has put itself in a pretty good position to capitalize on it. They've already got Preston Terrell from Brownsburg, who I think in a lot of circumstances would look like a much better, a much higher-end recruit than he actually is. But the talent level Purdue's bringing in at wide receiver you know, perhaps he doesn't jump off the page at you uh, like he would otherwise, but he's a really good player, uh, a really good prospect. Jalen Allstott Van Deventer, obviously from Mooresville, is was their second commitment, I think. Um, another in-state player, and then if Purdue can get in, uh, can get Karloftis, Donovan McCulley, Zach Richards, um, and then perhaps. Perhaps Josh Sales. There's also Dalen Carnell and Kyron Montgomery. That'd be a hell of an in-state class alone. Uh, obviously, a lot has to fall into place for that to happen, but I think Purdue's put itself in a position to get at least a few more of those guys. Um, so Purdue seems to sit in a pretty good spot right now for another uh, pretty solid recruiting class based on a lot of these chips that could fall into place, whatever that means, um, early on here in the process. So that's sort of what I got on Purdue graduate transfer and 2021 recruiting. As I said, a lot of the topics you guys have sent in are duly noted and uh, will likely be covered in some fashion as we move forward uh, with this ambitious endeavor uh, we've undertaken here uh, to have one of these videos every single day when we're in quarantine. So I hope this was worthwhile. I hope this was worth your time. This has been your goldenblack.com. Daily Quarantine, simulcast, brought to you by Follett's Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus, reminding you once again uh, to support our local businesses or to just get damn good food or preferably both. Please keep in mind the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. So for goldenblack.com and the official ladder of the Daily Quarantine, this is Brian Newbert. Have a good Monday. We will talk to you all again tomorrow.